Today we're taking a trip to Mount Injun Active Volcano in Indonesia, also called Kawa Injun Volcano or the Electric Blue Fire. There are two popular routes to get to Mount Injun. From the Ubud or Kuta area, you could drive the scenic route to Benjuadang. Price ranges from 40 to 50 US dollars. Once in Benjuadang, you catch a 24 hour operating ferry to Java. This ride takes approximately 45 minutes and costs less than $5. From the port, you then get transported to the base of Mount Injin. Stick with me till the end because I have some exciting tips for you in terms of places to stay, things to do when you're in Bali, and also some important facts about Mount Injin. The other option is to fly into Java. You can book a flight and go directly to Java. The flight takes approximately an hour and a half and the plane ticket ranges from $70 to $100. From the airport, you then have six hours drive to get to Banjuwangi and rest for your hike. 12 a.m. We gotta get up. We need to get to the base of Mount Injun by 2 a.m. At the base, we stop for a quick bite and off we go. We now have two hours hike to get to the peak of Mount Engine. As we climb up an elevation of 2,769 meters, terrain mainly of gravel and dirt, we will see the moon cascade against the mountain, the human limousine taxis, and a lot of other eager, excited hikers, excited when we made the first round. At first glance, you're hit with a strong smell of sulfur. To be reminded that Mount Injun is an active volcano. It's also called Kawa Injun Volcano or Electric Blue Fire. As you walk around the area, you can see the sign of the last magmatic eruption, which occurred in 1817. The last phreatic eruption occurred in 2002, which caused very little damage, but presented a danger to anyone mining sulfur or visiting the area at that time. I hope you're excited because now we go into the crater. We now get a once in a lifetime opportunity to see the blue fire. The blue fire is ignited by the sulfuric gas which emerges from the cracks at a temperature of up to 600 degrees. The flames can be up to five meters high. Some of the gas condenses to liquid and is still ignited. We were privileged to have a former sulfur miner as a tour guide. Isn't it hot? Hot? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two minutes. Sorry. And there you have it. When visiting Mount Engine, miners are always there working very hard. Please give them the right away. The last, but far from the least, we need to go and see the active crater. The lake is recognized as the largest highly acidic crater lake in the world. Swimming in Kawa Engine is definitely forbidden. The spectacular color is caused by the hydrogen chloride gas emitted into the water resulting in highly condensed hydrochloric acid with a pH of almost zero. We now have to climb the rocky terrain out of the crater to go and catch the sunrise before 5 to 6 a.m. And we've made it to join the other eager spectators for our photo shoot. While I'm showing you the area, I will go into some of what I promised. 
and start telling you some interesting information about Mount Injun. In September 2015, a Swiss tourist died at Mount Injun. November 2016, a 20-year-old Balinese student died collapsing on the slopes. As I continue with the statistics, I will now show you all the beautiful pictures you could take from that location. June 2020, a 59-year-old man from Indonesia jumped into the acid lake and died instantaneously. A few years ago, a French tourist fell into the lake and died. Borders has placed Mount Injun as one of the most dangerous hikes in the world. Mental Floss also have Mount Injun on their list as the most terrifying hike. He says, and I quote, a beautiful turquoise lake sits in the crater at the top of Mount Injun, but you wouldn't want to take a dip in it. I read the list of casualties so that you could be aware that incidents do happen at Mount Injun, so exercise caution as you go on your journey. Don't leave yet. We will be going through some tips as to where to stay and what to do whichever route you had decided to take in order to get to Mount Injun. Of course, we got here slowly, but we will leave quickly. Down the slope toward transportation, I took the ferry, so I'm going the ferry back. We're always going to be flying out. And then we go to tips. There are numerous hotels to stay in Banjuadang area and tons of activities to do, such as snorkeling or dive the Meningen Island, go to the clear water hot spring, or just go and catch the sunrise at the Batu Kursi Mountain. If you go to Banjuadang, I find it best to buy a tour package from one of the local tour guides, which will include transportation to and from the ferry, ferry ticket, transportation to the base of Mount Injun, breakfast, and a guide. Usually it costs 1.5 million rupee, which is 96 US dollars. Until we meet again, thanks for joining me. Bye.